Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The images I'm showing you here are from the 1990 United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Report. The graph shows satellite measurements of Arctic sea ice extent going back to the year 1972. The text of the United Nations document reads, Satellite observations have been used to map sea ice extent routinely since the early 1970s. And they said that from 1972 to 1975, sea ice extent was significantly less. So according to the United Nations report, sea ice extent was at a minimum in 1974, and it reached a maximum in 1979. This graph is from the 1995 United Nations report, and it shows exactly the same thing. But in their 2001 report, the United Nations massively altered the Arctic sea ice data. In the 1990 report, they showed the years 1972 to 1975 as being the lowest on record. And they showed a similar story in the 1995 report. But six years later, the United Nations altered the data to make those years among the highest on record. This is the graph from the 1990 report, and this is the same graph from the 2001 report shown at exactly the same scale. In the 1990 report, sea ice extent was increasing. But in the 2001 report, they changed the increasing trend into a sharply decreasing trend. This was 1990, and this was 2001. It was pretty easy to spot the data tampering by the United Nations. So now they've changed strategies to their deception, and they simply hide all the data before the peak year of 1979. By doing this, they can make it look like there's an accelerating trend of Arctic sea ice loss. I'm going to discuss this deception in a minute, but first let's go back a little bit further in time. This graph is from the 1985 Department of Energy report, which was the predecessor to the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. They showed that Arctic sea ice extent was very low during the 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s. In 1958, the New York Times said that Arctic sea ice was disappearing very rapidly and predicted that within a generation, the Arctic Ocean may open, enabling ships to sail over the North Pole. That didn't happen, but if we go back to around the time when Stonehenge was built, the Arctic Ocean may have been ice-free. Carbon dioxide levels were very low then, and that pretty much wrecks the global warming story. So it's not surprising the United Nations doesn't want to present any accurate information about the years before 1979. NASA is also deeply involved in this fraud. This is from their website. They say that satellite observations started in the year 1979. But according to the 1990 United Nations report, satellite observations have been used to map sea ice extent routinely since the early 1970s. It's fascinating to me that the United States Space Agency, which put men on the moon in the year 1969, claimed they don't have satellite observations prior to 1979. In 2007, NASA's Jay Zwally predicted the Arctic would be ice-free by the year 2012. And in 2008, NASA's James Hansen, who started the global warming scare before Congress in 1988, predicted an ice-free Arctic between 2013 and 2018. Congressional Democrats recognized him as a climate prophet. In 2007, the United Nations and Al Gore were awarded the Nobel Prize for their climate prophecies. At the Nobel Prize award ceremony, Al Gore predicted an ice-free Arctic by the year 2014. Another new study to be presented by U.S. Navy researchers later this week warns it could happen in as little as seven years. Seven years from now. In the last few months, it has been harder and harder to misinterpret the signs that our world is spinning out of kilter. These experts didn't do very well with their predictions. There's more sea ice now than there was 15 years ago when Al Gore won the Nobel Prize. The Arctic minimum extent this year was up more than 30% from 10 years ago. But instead of admitting that they were wrong, NASA simply doubles down on their propaganda. 2022 Arctic summer sea ice tied for 10th lowest on record. But what's actually going on is that Arctic sea ice extent has been increasing for the past 10 years. In 2007, the BBC reported Arctic summer is ice-free by 2013. 
but I don't see any retractions or mea culpa coming from the BBC. There's a lot more sea ice now than there was 6,000 years ago when carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere were very low. Now let's take a look at why the United Nations and NASA hide all the data from before 1979. 1979 was the coldest year on record in Iceland. The warmest years were around 1940. But by hiding the pre-1979 data, it would be possible to draw a straight line, making it look like Iceland is heating up out of control. And that's exactly what government agencies are doing with Arctic sea ice. They're hiding all the data before 1979 and drawing a fake linear trend. But the reality is that Arctic sea ice extent has increased somewhat over the last 15 years. The claim that Arctic sea ice is melting due to the burning of fossil fuels has no basis in science and has no basis in history. The United Nations climate scam is completely dependent on spreading misinformation and censoring anybody who tells the truth. The United Nations bragged at this World Economic Forum event that they are collaborating with Google to censor any other points of view about climate. We partnered with Google, for example, if you Google climate change, you will, at the top of your search, you will get all kinds of UN resources. We started this partnership when we were shocked to see that when we Googled climate change, we were getting incredibly distorted uh, information right at the top. So we, we're becoming much more proactive. Um, you know, we own the science and we think that the world you know, should know it, and, and the platforms themselves also do. Um, but again, it's, it's, it is, um, it's, it's a huge, huge challenge that I think all sectors of society need to be very active in. They're taking a similar approach to what governments did 500 years ago. At that time, governments considered people who disputed geocentricism to be dangerous, so they had them silenced. Frederick Douglass said, to suppress free speech is a double wrong. It violates the rights of the hearer as well as those of the speaker. It is just as criminal to rob a man of his right to speak and hear as would be to rob him of his money. The United Nations crimes are certainly not victimless. They're leading the world towards energy poverty, food poverty, and likely war. They say they own the science, but the world can't run off of their lies and propaganda. Toto has been predicting this and warning about it for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, and Upla on the web at realclimatescience.com.